Okay, uh, another Deneb video for you today. Um, this one isn't going to be a full build, but basically just share and do a walkthrough of a much more complicated visual um, that uh, I developed with a, a colleague named Anselmo Gomez. Um, and it's a it's another great example of how powerful you know the Deneb visual, which is leveraging Vega Light, can be. Um, and so the visual I'll, I'll show you today, there's few variations on it, um, is, you know, inspired by the international uh, business communication standards, but uh, definitely isn't compliant with that yet. And also, you know, some of the awesome visuals that are out there, like the ones from Zebra BI, which are way better than, than what I'll show you today. Um, but, but there are people out there that are trying to, you know, make more uh, advanced visuals and sort of multi-visuals. Um, and we're hopeful that this will give you a starting point or, or ideas to, to go even further. And so, you know, we're sharing the code here. Um, hopefully, maybe you can use it as is. Um, but if not, it could be a good starting point to take further. And we just ask that if you do take it further, share it back out with the community. Uh, and as always, you know, if you're learning from these videos and if you've watched a couple of them by now, maybe go ahead and just hit that subscribe button to to keep hearing about the new ones. All right, so I'll just start here on the this version. This is kind of the version we started with and, and stuff is um, horizontally concatenated. So we've got three three visuals here. We've got these um, this bar chart that shows you the actual and the plan. Uh, and, and this is actually one variation from IBCS already. I think the plan is supposed to be solid white um, and forecasts are supposed to be this hash uh, pattern here. It's easy to change. Um, and then in this next chart, we have the absolute difference between these two. And in the last chart, we have the relative difference between these two. And so this is a, you know, a useful view uh, when you're looking at it. In this case, we've got, got just got some mock data here. Um, I use the Greek letters to simulate different projects, for example, that might have uh, planned and actual values. And this is all the input is, uh, just these three columns. And so this visual um, can be used in, in lots of other scenarios too, and it just has these three inputs. With like Charticulator and Deneb visuals, um, a good technique, and you can, you can always do more with like measures, for example, to pass in more stuff and reduce sort of the amount of logic and calculation you need to do inside the visual. Um, but I kind of like this because it's pretty elegant that you only have three inputs and you're getting, you know, all this output. Like, see, for example, we're not providing a measure that gives this absolute difference or this relative difference. This is all being calculated inside the visual. All right. So the next version... It's just a minor change building towards what I want to go through. Um, this one was just adding the, the labels on this one. So just, you know, layering in another text mark there into this visual. Um, this is just a, a vertical concatenation of the, of the same. Uh, and it's the next one that I'm going to walk through. Because uh, here where we have, you know, everything has values on it. So we really don't need these axes here. So that's what this next version is is getting rid of all those axes. And again, the probably 90% of the charts I've shown you so far are all the same code and just, you know, variations on, on that to get it to go vertical from, from horizontal. So this is the one I want to walk through. Uh, not to completely build it, that would take too long, but just to show you the major components of it. So if you decide to use it, you can um, further modify it. And then at the the end, I'll walk through this same chart, but adding adding some of this um, a section up here to to further summarize your data uh, with this kind of stuff up top. And I think I'm actually just going to make a separate video on how to do this because I had to learn a few things to get this to work today, um, and I think those might be worth sharing. But but I'll just start by going through this one. So I'm going to jump into the editor and. As mentioned before, this is really the concatenation of three charts. And, you know, if you look inside each chart, you know, you can see, okay, there's must be three marks in this one. There's the black bar, the hash bar, and the text. This one, there's two things layered together, a bar um, and the text. Same, um, then in this one, there's three things. There's the, the bar, the point, and the, the label. 
So that's you know what you kind of expect to see in this visual. And I'm just going to start by collapsing some things down just to to simplify what this is really what's really going on here. Um, this last part config I added recently just to get rid of the the gray border that was around each chart just to make it look a little better. But uh, that's that's the same in all of them. So really what this is, there's kind of four things um, that are key to making this visual. Um, one is this transform section. And then in the V can cat, there's these three uh, specs that we're passing in. So the three charts that we want to concatenate together. And, you know, in the, the earlier version I showed, it was just an H concat instead of a C concat or a V concat. All right, so the first part I'll explain is just this transform section. So this is a really nice feature. Um, again, this could be done with measures and to simplify things, uh, you know, maybe that's the way you want to go and um, it, it's a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Um, but it is kind of neat that you could do this stuff inside the visual. And so what this transform is doing, these are effectively calculated columns uh, inside uh, the visual. And so I'm using the calculate transform and um, datum is how you reference to like the sort of the current value on the current row uh, in there. And so I'm basically here for the absolute difference. I'm just saying what's, you know, take the actual value and subtract the plan value. And this is sort of the column name, you know, call this ABS underscore diff. Then the same thing for the relative, right? I'm taking the actual minus the plan and I'm dividing by the plan, right? So, um, how far off were we from the plan and naming that column relative uh, diff. All right, and so then if we get into the visuals themselves, I'll start with the bottom one here and expand that one. And so, you know, I set all of them to the same width. This one's a little taller than the other ones. And then there's this layer section where we have the bar, the, the black bar, um, the hash bar, and then the text label, okay? And then there is some shared encoding. You know, they all are by the, the project. Um, I've sorted them all by the actual descending, um, but of course you could change this. And then there's some other stuff about the x-axis um, that they, they have in common. And then if you just look at each of the, the marks, um, you know, one, one trick that's here, you know, to get these to show um, side by side, you know, you could do like I showed in a previous video, X offset, and you could even fold, <clears throat> fold them to sort of unpivot the data inside the visual. I didn't do that here. Um, and I basically just gave them different fixed uh, offset values of 0 and 0.5. And then I also made them so that the bars were narrower so that you, you'd see, see them and they'd take up the same amount of space or similar. Um, by using this band thing of 0.5. So basically make them half as wide as you would have normally. I'm doing the color, a little bit of opacity. I got tooltips showing up. Um, and that's it. And then, you know, I mentioned before the thing about hash or white. Um, and it would certainly be easy just to change this to white, you know, to show what plan is supposed to be from a IBCS standpoint. Um, but I showed this one because it's more complex and harder to remember than, than white. Um, all right, so that's the that's the bottom chart. Uh, and then again, I'm just doing the, sorry, the third mark here is the text. Some, some things about the text, you can give it a font weight property to make it bold. Um, I offset it a little bit X and Y to just to get it to show up more over the black bars to show that it would show that it was the actual value, not that you could confirm by hovering for the tooltip. Um, and then I'm adding this format here, which is using this 0.2s, which automatically puts um, you know, the M there for millions. Uh, I'll show you on the next page with the summary thing that you have to do another step to avoid to, to show billions instead of uh, G for, for gig, because this is um, SI units, basically. Uh, but it does give you that nice functionality of dynamically um, giving you the, uh, you know, whether it's millions or, or gig or whatever. Uh, all right. So that's the bottom chart. So I'll collapse that back up. And then, you know, these other two are very similar. So I'll, I think I'll just expand the top one to save time and show you that one since it has more things going on. Uh, again, set the same width, made it a little 
uh, shorter. Um, again, gave it the encoding for the project, sorted it by the same thing so that things are, are lined up here. Um, turns out I had to do this op step here to aggregate, even though there's a single row uh, per that, I had to add this to get it to work, which I'm not fully sure why that is. If somebody knows, please put it in the in the comments, but, but it works. So we're summing a single row's value. Um, again, I'm, I'm using that calculated column from the transform step as the as the Y encoding. Um, this union width is just to make sure that the scale always goes from negative 100% to positive 100%, um, just so that you know uh, small changes didn't look uh, look bad or larger than they should. Um, bunch of properties to you know hide the uh, the axis there, or the title, um, the domain, the the ticks, the labels, and I wanted to uh, because the X axis is actually down here. I still wanted to show this black bar here, so we did this uh, trick. So instead of just saying axis null, in which in which case we wouldn't see this, um, you know, made all these things false or null, and then just added a grid color condition to check where if if we're at the zero line, right, because this goes positive and negative, if this is at the zero line, you have to put the two equals here. That's the syntax for equals. Um, then call, then make it black, otherwise call it white. So those other lines are there, you just can't see them. Okay, um, and then for the color, uh, we wanted it, again, we use the condition syntax here. So that's shown here that if it was negative, we want it to be red, and if it was uh, otherwise, we want it to be green. So that's how we get that. Um, and then same thing with the um, the point. Sorry, we're looking at this chart. I forgot. Um, and so with the point there, and then we've got the rectangle width of one, which is the the little line going up to the the point. And then we've got the text. Um, and then the same thing here. We're actually dynamically uh, aligning the text based on if it's a positive or negative number. Um, so again, if it's if it's a negative number, then it goes on the bottom. Um, otherwise, it goes on the top. Um, and then same thing with the, uh, the Y offset. We're just giving it a little extra offset based on if it's uh, less than zero or not uh, as well. Okay, and then same kind of thing, and again, just providing a format string here, and this is the syntax to get, you know, 0.1 units, 0.1% uh, uh, value to show. All right, and then this chart is very similar to that chart, and just a little simpler because there's not, there's only two marks instead of three. Okay, all right, so that's most of, I guess that's the whole chart that I was going to explain, and then the last thing I wanted to show was just this last one with this top summary. And again, I think I'll make a separate video for this, um, but, I'll, but I'll just give you the high level explanation here. So again, this is just, we're just concatenating one more thing in here um, with these. So now we have four things being concatenated. So if I jump into this, we'll just focus on that part. And so in this part, again, we've got these same uh, transformations up here to generate those same columns. And then in this one, we're actually just this top new. So this is the new um, view or spec that's being concatenated. So this is the top one. Um, I made it even shorter because there's not much stuff going on there. And I'm doing a further transformation, uh, this time an aggregation, um, where I'm doing a sum of the total actual. Uh, and then sorry, of the of the actual value. Uh, and um, this one I'm doing an average of the relative difference, right? So um, again, we're, we're doing a calculation here of something we've, of a calculated column we generate in the visual. Now we're further doing an average. So this is like an average X, you know, over each project, what's the average relative difference that, that we're seeing here? Um, and creating, again, those two, new columns, but but this is a summarized view of it. Um, so it really just kind of is a one row uh, table that now has this total actual and average difference um, things here. And so from there, we're just layering two marks. And 
um, setting the text size and that. And in this case, I'm just using um, this expression syntax to indicate what the text should be. And so this is actually how you concatenate um, text is with the plus sign here. And then inside the, so you put the outer, the outside of the expression has to be double quotes. And then all the stuff inside has single quotes. And so I'm just concatenating this total actual equals text with this expression that I'm generating. And I started out with just this format part that came up to here. And I did the point to S. And like I mentioned before, you know, when I add up all these millions, right, it gets um, above a billion. And this is SI unit, so it ends up putting a G there instead of a B. And so I found this online that you can actually wrap this in a replace. And basically, you know, if there's a G there, replace it with a B. And that's how I got this to show as billions. Okay. Um, and then uh, this is another neat trick as well that you don't have, always have to use the fields that you pass into the visual. Um, you can hard code in pixel values for where you want your text to show up. So here we are encoding um, X, X and Y positions for these texts. So it's an, uh, the width of the chart is 800. So I put it in the middle at 400. Um, and then I put this one at the top. So a Y value of zero. And then, you know, same kind of approach here. I made it a little smaller. And then I also put it in the middle, but I moved it down 25 pixels, um, given the size I chose of 20. And, uh, you know, got it to look pretty good. Of course, there's a lot more somebody could do to make this prettier. Um, you could also add some conditional stuff to add an up arrow, a down here arrow, et cetera. Um, I didn't have time to do that. I, I started out thinking I was going to do that, but I ran out of time. Um, and so I'm, I'm sharing it in this state. Okay. Um, so again, hopefully this may give you something that you can start with and make a really powerful visual for, for your organization. Um, again, if you do end up using it, please share it back out with the community. Uh, again, lots could be done to make this better. And I, and I hope you do. Um, and I will put a link in the description to this PBIX file, um, on Google drive. Thanks.